Hey there, how's it going? Uh, we are here to tell you about the Increasing Rust's Reach program. Um, I'm Lee Bailey, I use they, them pronouns, and I'm currently a web developer at Tilda in Portland, Oregon, in the United States. Um, I've attended almost every Rust Fest except for the first one. Um, I spoke at Rust Fest Kiev, and I attended the Paris, Zurich, and now Rome. Uh, so it's really awesome to be here again. Uh, I was a Rust Reach participant in the first iteration in 2017, and in 2018, I returned as a partner. Alan. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Alan. I participated in Rust Reach 2018. That was this year, for those of you who don't remember. And I'm currently a full stack developer in South Africa doing um, front end and back end, even though I live in Namibia. And this is my first Rust Fest, my first Rust conference, my first software conference ever. But it will not be my last. Uh, back to Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. And it's your first talk, too, right? Yeah. yeah so, a lot of firsts. Uh, so, what is the Increasing Rust Reach program, or Rust Reach, which we call it for short? Uh, Increasing Rust's Reach is one of several programs run by the Rust programming language team to grow Rust's community of project collaborators and leaders. The program matches Rust team members from all parts of the project with individuals who are underrepresented in Rust's community and the tech industry at large uh, for a partnership of three months from mid-May to mid-August. Each partnership agrees to a commitment of three to five hours about uh, every week working on a Rust project. So unlike a traditional mentor-mentee relationship, we refer to the groups of people in the program as partners uh, and participants, which reinforces the fact that we believe the project has an equal amount to learn from participants as they have to learn from partners. So a typical week will include a one-hour meeting with your Rust partner, uh, a one-hour weekly sharing meeting with a larger group of, pro of program participants, and a few hours of pairing or independent work on your specific project. So since partners and participants are distributed all over the world, uh, a lot of the time these weekly meetings will happen two times um, to account for um, all the different time zones. Uh, Ashley was the one who ran the weekly meeting most of the time and she often arranged for guests to come and speak to all the particip participants about their role in the Rust community, which was really awesome. Um, best of all, uh, by way of thanks for participating in the program, uh, they offer a fully paid conference ticket, travel, and accommodations to every participant uh, to a, one Rust conference of their choice. Um, so I'm just curious, is anybody here from Rust Reach or anybody come here on Rust Reach ticket at all? Nobody? That's sad. Y'all are not, <laughs> they're not using their tickets. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Um, so, some Rust Reach projects this year included uh, WASM, Diesel, uh, CLI, uh, Rustlang.org, Internationalization and Design, and CLAP RS. Uh, some stats about the Rust Reach 2018 program are that our partners and participants spanned nine time zones, 11 countries, 64% uh, uh, speaking English as a second language, and have fluency in more than 14 languages. There were a lot of changes from the first to second year of Rust Reach. Uh, since it was kind of a big experiment, the first year was a lot more free form. Um, all the partners and participants largely would choose how they wanted to approach the project, and they organized, they organized it however they wanted. Um, the only real initial requirement was you have to do like three to five hours of work on your project every week, and you have to check in with your partner um, at like whatever intervals you decide on. So uh, some of the big changes in 2018, was that um, Ashley took over the bulk of organizing. Uh, I think the original organizer was Carol. Um, she added weekly group meetings with the two time zone options, uh, with guest speakers. Uh, everyone checked in with her every week. Um, she made sure everything was running smoothly. Every time there were hiccups, um, she would like work to smooth them over. So basically, um, you know, the biggest difference between 2017 and 2018 was Ashley. <laughs> Um, she was great. So, um, however, I say that based on my personal experience, um, since she was the one I interacted with the most, so um, I would like to just give a little round of applause for the whole organizing team for the, intern the Rust Reach program. <laughs> they all worked really hard and they, they made it awesome for everyone. So.
So uh, I'm going to hand it over to Alan to talk about his experience. Hello again. Back to our musical microphones. Um, this is my Rust Reach experience. It started with the application to Rust Reach. So I don't use Rust at work. I ran across it a couple of years back, and I thought it looked pretty cool. At least it looked better than C++. But um, at the time, we didn't have a use case for it. So the best I could do was follow a couple of people on Twitter and star a couple of GitHub repos. And thanks to that, I came across an invitation for applications to Rust Reach on my Twitter. And I thought, what is this thing? I looked it up, and it seemed like the type of project that really does help a language that's somewhat in its infancy. Because what you want more than anything else is to not have a language that is designed by one homogenous group of people. The more voices, the more eyes you have looking at your language design process, the better the language comes out. So I thought, hey, maybe I'll try apply and see what happens. Um, I applied immediately. Um, it, the application itself was quite nice. The questions generally just try to figure out, are you using Rust? Would you like to use Rust? Where do you come from? Um, what can you bring to the table as a participant in this uh, project? And do you have the time to do three to five hours a week? Um, I did have the time. So then I was one of the few lucky ones that got in. I did not expect that to happen, but it happened. So then after that, Ashley reached out to us via email and got everything started. So at the beginning, we still had to figure out how are we going to communicate. I didn't know anything about the 2017 Rust Reach project. So for me, the whole concept of a conference being conference type project being run from America while I'm South Africa and participants are from Japan and Australia and whatever, it seemed really like a logistical nightmare. But uh, Ashley sorted that out in one email and everything worked perfectly after that. So the first thing they did was give us our project assignment. So part of the application was a list of projects that we will be doing um, this year at Rustreach. And the list included, um, I think uh, Lee already mentioned a couple, CLAP, CLI, WASM, and so on. So you had to choose a couple that you were interested in. And once you got into the project, they assigned you to one of these groups. And I got assigned to the CLAP group, working with Kevin Knapp, um, who's uh, well, one of the few exceptional programmers I've met. <laughs> and it's been lots of fun working with him. So once I got into my project, the next meeting was to meet up with Kevin. So myself, Kevin, and the other participant in our group met up with him. And we just sort of had a first meeting to get to know each other. Who's Kevin? Who's Alan? Who's this? What have you been doing with uh, Rust? And if nothing, what do you want to do with Rust? So it was a very casual, welcoming environment right from the start, which I think is great because there was no restriction on who can join the program. You didn't have to be you know, 10 years of Rust usage. You know, anyone could join. Um, so we started with that. And Kevin's idea to get us going was to simply write a little Linux utility, Unix utility, in Rust. Not all of it, just as far as we could go. And he would take a look at our code, see what we are doing, and maybe just contribute a bit to how we write. And at the same time, we would get to get some experience from him, see how he usually codes and whatnot. And this allowed him to establish a baseline for both myself and the other participant. After that, we get straight into the work for the project. So the first month of the project was mostly us just getting our feet wet with Rust. And the rest of the project was the actual work for Rust Reach that we needed to do. And for myself, um, Kevin decided that we are going to try and get CLAP to version 3. And he had two major things he wanted to deal with. One was our uh, YAML parser. So for those of you who have used CLAP, you know that one way of entering your arguments is via a YAML file. And we wanted to move that to start using Surday YAML rather than YAML Rust. Um, that was our initial plan. And we got to a point where we had to stop because one of the ways that Sergey reads YAML files wasn't really compatible with what Kevin wanted to happen when it comes to CLAP reading the file. And since we couldn't fix it on our side, it was sort of a, an issue in the dependency um, Sergey YAML, we decided to let it rest for now. So I don't think it's been changed yet. 
So if any of you is expecting that we're using Sergey YAML in version three, we probably aren't. For the second attempt, we decided to jump into the other thing that a lot of people have spoken about today, and that is um, Structopt. So there have been for a long time Clap and Structopt as the two libraries for argument parsing, where Structopt just builds on top of Clap and adds a proc macro to do all the work for you. And Kevin spoke with the person who wrote Structopt, and they decided it would make sense to merge the proc macro into Clap, if possible. So that was our second um, task. And I had never used a proc, proc macro at all. I had never seen the code for a proc macro. I had obviously never debugged a proc macro either. So this was a hugely new experience for me. But thankfully, I had one to two hours every week sitting with Kevin on video chat with code open. And he would walk through the code. I would actually drive, and he would say, OK, jump to this file. And in this file, there's this going on. And this is what happens when this changes, and so on and so forth. So it's a huge learning experience for me. And it also gets Kevin himself to think about his code as he writes it. So a lot of, we had quite a bit of refactoring happening just because Kevin couldn't easily explain what was going on here or there. And so together, we got through quite a bit of the code up until one point where, well, we were missing a comma, which happens all the time. And finding a comma in a macro is a problem. Um, we use a lot of cargo expand. That didn't really help. Um, but it's a great tool, though. Fantastic tool. But in our case, it didn't help. But, our, uh, but a little <laughs> after a bit of um, checking out GitHub code and whatnot, we found the comma. We deleted it. And yeah, everything tests passed, goals achieved. And yeah, so I think we have a working derive for clap now, which might be in version 3. So you might not have to use Structop. Maybe. I don't know. After that, um, we, had, we've, we kept having these meetings with Ashley every week. And at the end of everything, it was mostly just a, a winding down. So for me, what was um, Rust Fest, uh, increasing Rust Reach 2018, sorry, um, is a fantastic way to build this community. There's a lot of people who had never gotten into Rust that were there. And I know quite a few people that I've spoken to about this, and they're really excited about Rust, even though they had never used it before. So that, I think, is a great thing about our, um, increasing Rust reach. It was extremely well organized and handled right from the very first application all the way up until the very last meeting. It was fantastic for me, at least. And I think it was so for all the other um, people who were involved. Um, I would like it to be a bit more public during the project. Uh, there's not a lot of people outside of the project that could follow along with what we were doing. And I think that would be better just for the communities uh, as a whole. And again, because I liked it so much, I want more people to experience it. I want more partners to have a chance to uh, mentor. I want uh, bigger groups for the partners, a longer time period for us. The whole thing, a whole bunch of things I want, but it's just more of increasing Rust reach. And that, Pretty much was uh, my experience in Rust Reach 2018. Thank you very much. So I also want to talk a little bit about my personal experience with Rust Reach since I got to experience both sides as a participant the first year and a partner the second year. Um, so as I mentioned, I was a participant the first round in 2017. Uh, and I was chosen to work on redesigning rustlang.org with another participant. Um, overall, I had a positive experience. <laughs> but um, if I'm being honest, since it was the first iteration of the program, it was a little bit rocky. Um, it seemed like your experience really depended on who your partner was and how much structure they put on it. And in my case, there just wasn't really that much structure beyond like, oh, we, we want a new design. Um, <laughs> but uh, I don't really know that much about website design. so. Um, yeah. Since I'm a web developer, I'm not really a designer. It proved to be pretty difficult. Um, I did the best I could, but uh, I didn't really get that much feedback on my work. I wasn't really sure what I was supposed to do a lot of the time. Uh, I learned a lot because in spite of my background, um, I actually had never built a website from scratch from the ground up, so that was kind of cool to experience. Um, but even though the, none of the work that I did during that time ended up getting used for anything, it was still really useful because I learned a huge amount of stuff. Um, however, the experience that really stood out for me during that first iteration uh, of RustReach after the program was over um, was when I attended RustFest Zurich. Um, 
I was really anxious about attending that conference because at that time I had come out as trans a few months before and I had changed my name and I looked different, but like not that different. Um, so I would already been involved in the Rust community before I was in Rust Reach and I had spoken at Rust Fest Kiev. So like some people knew me, but I wasn't really that sure. Like it was, uh, it was very nerve wracking uh, showing up to that Rust Fest. Um, so I knew the community, you know, wasn't that diverse in spite of all, you know, our best efforts. So I really wasn't sure how it was going to go or how I, if I'd feel comfortable. Um, but I ended up meeting a bunch of other people who were also participants, um, who turned out to be other members of underrepresented groups. Um, and it was one of the best parts of the conference for me. Um, I immediately had a group of people who I felt really comfortable with, and we ended up just spending the whole time in Zurich together, and it was amazing. Um, I can't possibly overstate how much of a difference it made for me to have those people who were also in the program to hang out with when I was there in Zurich. Um, so as I mentioned, in 2018, the Rust Reach program made some big changes. Uh, some of the organizers switched hands, and the program became a lot more structured. Uh, this time around, I also made the switch from being participant to partner. And I had uh, two really talented designer slash developers working with me to implement a new design for the rustline.org site, which is obviously not like out there yet. Um, but I can't speak for the participants, obviously, but for me, uh, I tried really hard to ensure they had a positive experience, and I used my time uh, as a participant in 2017 as a model for what not to do, uh, which is like still worthwhile. So I thought about all the things I wished I had, and I just tried to make those things a reality for them. So some things that were important to me were to set out achievable goals, make sure I was extremely communicative, uh, make sure to give feedback often so everybody always knew what they should be doing and what they were doing next. Um, it didn't always go as I planned, but I do think their experience was a big improvement on mine. Uh, my biggest advice um, from my experience as a partner to other people who um, maybe are working with people who are underrepresented or just like really shy or maybe not very confident, which is the experience I had with my participants, is that you cannot be too nice. Um, you cannot be too friendly. Anytime you feel inclined to reach out, you should reach out. Um, you should check in on people and see how they're doing and just be proactive about offering to help or to pair if they don't feel, if, if they seem like they're not making a lot of progress. Uh, don't expect that just because they're quiet that they're fine, you know. Um, a lot of the time people get blocked by things that are more psychological than skills based, at least in my experience with my participants. Um, they were really talented, they were capable people, but they would just psych themselves out of things because they just didn't have a lot of confidence. Um, so I found a large part of my job as a partner was actually just like making sure that they are heard, like listening to them, being their cheerleader, getting them out of their own way is like probably the biggest thing. Um, and by the end of our three months together, uh, I was able to guide both of my participants through the process of making their first pull request and their uh, first commit on the repo, which was a super exciting, super big joy for me to experience. Um, this probably, for most people, it's probably been a long time since you submitted your first pull request ever. Uh, and like, sitting there waiting for it to go green and then clicking the merge button, like, I, I don't really remember mine, but it was, so, it was just really like magical to watch <laughs> them experience that. Um, so anyway, if you want to find out more about the Rust Reach program, you can check out the site at reach.rust-lang.org. Um, and if you know anyone who might benefit from participating in the program, they don't already have to know Rust. Um, you can feel free to send them a link to the site and encourage them to apply the next time applications are open. Uh, that is all. Thank you very much. <laughs>